Mikkelsen. Um, she's demand generation marketer at New Breed. And um, she had a, a nice speech yesterday um, about a very, very um, actual problem in marketing. Analysis paralysis. <laughs> It's a new illness, seems to be. What's analysis paralysis? <laughs> So analysis paralysis is when essentially you have so much data that you don't know what to do with it or where to start. You don't know what marketing metrics to prioritize or pay attention to. So essentially you just have so many choices that you kind of freeze in, in this state of analysis paralysis. And it's this problem that a lot of marketers tend to suffer from because we're in this day and age where we have access to so many metrics and so many data sources that it's really difficult to understand where we should be prioritizing our time. Do you have an idea how many metrics exist in the marketing area? Yeah, so in my own research and preparing for my session, um, I stumbled across a source that had a list of over 70 marketing metrics, and there's tons of them to choose from. Just in my own reporting dashboards, I see, you know, tons of them. And so it's clear that we definitely have an oversaturation of metrics um, in the B2B marketing ecosystem. So, but, in our, but in our times, uh, marketers have to tackle the whole thing. Um, they have to... Um, to make the marketing um, campaigns more efficient. What's your recipe, your um, prescription against an analysis paralysis? Of course. So the process that we use at Newbreed to really place value on different metrics based on their ability to contribute to our bottom line is this process of designating key performance indicators, which we call KPIs. So these are going to be the best actions that a user could take on your website, the thing that's going to bring them closest to becoming a paying customer. So that's your key performance indicator. And then We have our leading performance indicator, which is our LPI. So that's essentially the next best thing. So that's going to be the predictive metrics that are consistently leading to completion of that KPI that you designated first. And then lastly, we have tactical performance indicators or TPIs. So these are the really behavioral, very high level metrics. We like to call them vanity metrics. And so while they can't generate revenue on their own, these tactical performance indicators indicators give us a lot of insight into a user's digital body language so we can better infer what their next action may be in relation to completing your LPIs and eventually your KPIs. So I think the, um, the main challenge is um, to identify the right indicators for your own business and can you give us a, a short strategy for the, to, to tackle the whole problem? Yeah, so when you're designating your key performance indicator first, you always want to do it ref revenue in mind. So at Newbreed, you know, our one big thing that's going to bring a user closest to becoming that paying customer is requesting a free marketing consultation because we offer marketing and sales solutions. And, and from there, we found that um, in our historical data sets, we were seeing that people who were completing that KPI would first convert on a middle of funnel piece of content that reflected evaluation and consideration of our products. So they were looking at our case studies, our webinars, things of that nature, and that was leading them to complete our KPI. And then the way our tactical performance indicators played in there was we could see that while somebody was on our KPI landing page and maybe they didn't convert, we noticed that they were viewing it a lot, they were spending a lot of time on the page, they were scrolling the whole length. So while they didn't convert, we saw that they were interested and that would trigger us to adjust our strategy. So we would follow up with them and say something like, hey, we noticed you were checking out our free marketing consultation, but you didn't fill out the form. Like, do you want to book time to talk? Something of that nature. What is the right approach to handle the whole thing? What, uh, what do I have to, um, to have in mind? I would say the most important thing to consider is what actions are going to bring your company closest to generating a customer right there and then. Obviously, in B2B, the sales cycles are complex, and it's typically not a frictionless funnel. So you need to be very revenue-oriented and have a very solid understanding of the actions that precede a closed deal. So um, am I right in that I have to rethink my whole strategy of uh, evaluating my own um, customer life cycle from the, um, from the customer back to the, to the beginning? 
Yeah, having a really solid understanding of who your buyer persona is. So what types of companies and, and customers are going to find long-term value in your product or solution so that you can sell to them and acquire that new customer, but also retain them and upsell them so that their customer lifetime value goes up and they're consistently generating revenue for your business. Thank you so much for giving us this shortcut of your speech from three quarters of an hour. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>